Yes, good evening. After 13 years, the family of Christopher Alder have received a landmark apology from the government. It's agreed to pay them compensation after the former soldier collapsed and died in a Hull police station in 1998. In a moment, I'll be asking the Hull MP and former Home Secretary Alan Johnson why it's taken so long. But first, our correspondent Vicky Johnson has this report. Janet Alder's life has been dominated by her brother's death 13 years ago. She's conducted a tireless campaign to find out how Christopher died in police custody. Today, the government issued an unprecedented apology. These numerous families that are now still fighting for justice, you know, where their loved ones have died in police custody. And there's been absolutely no accountability. It seems to me that people, for some unknown reason, will not believe that police officers are as capable as anybody else is doing wrong. CCTV pictures captured the final minutes of the former paratrooper's life in 1998. Officers in the custody suite at Queen's Gardens police station simply stood by and watched. Five officers were charged back in 1999 with misconduct, but the trial was postponed until after the inquest, which happened in 2000, when the jury decided Christopher had been unlawfully killed. As a result, five Humberside police officers were charged with manslaughter. But during their trial in 2002, those charges were dropped and they were cleared of all offences. The following year, all five officers were cleared after facing disciplinary action. But it took continuing pressure from the older family before the Independent Police Complaints Commission issued a highly critical report questioning the independence and effectiveness of previous investigations. This led to an apology from the Humberside Force in 2006. The time is therefore right for me publicly to apologise to Christopher Alder's family for our failure to treat Christopher with sufficient compassion and to the desired standard that night. The Alders and their legal team have been fighting for years to have the case heard in the European Court of Human Rights. Today, the government admitted it had breached its obligations in regard to preserving life and ensuring that no one is subjected to inhuman or degrading treatment. By bringing the case to the European Court and forcing it all that way, um, Janet Alder has managed to uh, force the government into this position of making these admissions. And what we really want to know now is what's going to change for the future and what, what is going to happen um, if this ever happens again. While the family have scored a landmark victory over the government, their most pressing concern now is to establish how Christopher's body recently turned up in a mortuary in Hull 11 years after his very public funeral. Vicky Johnson, BBC Look North, Hull. Well, the Hull West and uh, Hesel MP Alan Johnson is joining us now from our studio in London. Mr Johnson, good evening to you. Good evening. Why has it taken the family so long to get an apology from the government? Well, it's taken a long time to actually get the case heard in Strasbourg. That moves at a very slow pace. And as your report said, the Alder family uh, pushed for that to go to Strasbourg. And the government today made what's called a unilateral declaration, which practically unheard of, and apologised on behalf of uh, Humberside Police, actually, um, but also recognised this breach of Christopher Alder's civil rights, not just in, case, in the sense of what happened to him, but also in the sense that there had been no independent and effective investigation. There should have been a public inquiry into this. That's what I was pushing for and what colleagues were pushing for, and it never happened, and despite all the other... Uh, bits of legal machinery, we've never really got to the bottom of what happened. What, was there nothing more that you could have done when you were in government, when you were Home Secretary, to speed this up? Uh, well, no, because by that time we'd had the High Court case, as your report said, there'd been the IPCC investigation, Christopher Alder's two sons, who were children at the time but now adults, uh, brought civil proceedings against Humberside Police. The Attorney General had ruled that there should be no public inquiry so I think the family were left to pursue this through Strasbourg and with the result that we've just seen. An apology is one thing but still nobody has been held accountable for Christopher's death. Uh, shouldn't the officers involved face action? Well we've been through this I mean they were accused of uh, a, a rather arcane thing and not manslaughter but misuse of public office uh, which carries this, a similar kind of penalties but uh, you know we have no control over the courts and that's quite right the judge halted the trial and uh, ordered it uh, ordered the police officers to be uh, 
released. So I think, you know, I, I'm a defender of the police on many things, and uh, Tim Hollis and Homicide Police have done great work over the last few years, but no one in the police that I've spoken to uh, has any doubt something was dreadfully wrong here, and we've still not could, got to the bottom of this. And as you say, no one has effectively been held accountable, but the orders have battled on through the most terrible circumstances, and I hope that this unilateral declaration today is at least some uh, recognition of, uh, of what went wrong. Mr Johnson, thank you very much for your time tonight. Now, uh, in a moment on tonight's programme...